welcome back to Weeby Kids. In today's session, we are going to be looking at taking inspiration from the beautiful British Robin, and we're going to create some wonderful wire hanging Robins. To make your beautiful hanging Robin, you're going to need a stick. Yes, one from one of your walks would be absolutely perfect and perhaps some secateurs to cut it to size. You're also going to need some wire. For this, I use some three millimeter aluminium modeling craft wire, but you can use whatever you have to hand, but make sure if it's for little people that it's fairly malleable and easy to mold. A pencil is useful. You're going to need scissors, some pliers, and also some twine. And I've got some pictures of Robins here, but I'm sure you can find some on perhaps Christmas cards, online or in books. And don't forget to check out the RSPB website. Begin by taking your stick and stripping it down of any unnecessary branches. They may break off or perhaps you may need to use the secateurs. Cut it roughly to the size you think you're going to need and make sure you haven't left any sharp ends behind. Next is the wire. You're going to need to remember that wire can be quite dangerous to work with. It does have a sharp end. Always be aware of the ends of your wire. If you are working with young children, they may want to be wearing safety goggles or you can cover the tips of the wire with some kind of electrical tape or blue tack or something that means that the sharp end isn't going to be flapping around as is the case when you work with wire. You're going to need to pull yourself out approximately 1 to 1.2 meters worth of wire and cut it there to make sure that you have got enough. Once your wire is cut, collect your stick. You need to work out which is going to be the front and which you're going to have as the back of your stick. And often this doesn't matter too much. Begin by wrapping the wire tightly around the stick and then securing it by wrapping the excess wire around, as you can see. Use the pliers to tighten off any ends. If a child is doing this, that might be the task for the adult. Next, get your inspiration and simplify it. I have uploaded this design if you'd like to work from it, so you can always print it off or you can create your own. Then, really it's quite simple. It's a case of bending your wire into the shapes that are required. It's helpful to use the template underneath, as you can see me doing here, but it's not a must. Remember, your outcomes are all going to look quite different, so don't be too worried. If you're trying to create edges or sharp corners, angles, you're going to need to use your pliers as you just see me do there in order to create this. When you're working with slightly thicker wire, your angles or any points are clearly going to be much softer. Now, the reason that we're using this particular wire is that it's very easy to cut and very easy to mold with. Once you have cut a piece of wire, it is simply a case of wrapping it around the nearest piece of wire to it and then just twisting until you get to a point where you've got an end and then using the pliers to pull that round and then just flattening it down. There will sometimes be still a sharp end, just be aware of this. When attaching a new piece, make sure that you give yourself plenty of excess. Slot it round and again in the same way as you finished off, wrap your wire onto the wire where you want it to begin and then start to create and form the shapes 
once again. You feel free if you want to try any other way of following the pattern. This is just the way I chose to do it today. Once you've made it to the bottom of your robin, you're going to bend your wire back on itself and then you're going to wrap it through and pull it round and back down. And go back then and just use those pliers to pince the wire tight where the legs join onto the body at the bottom. Then it's simply a case of wrapping on your claw or your talon onto the stick. Check that you're going in the same direction as your first one in the hope that all your ends are going to end up on one side of your robin rather than coming forward. Then wrap on the wire. Use the pliers to tighten it all up and flatten the ends to finish. Use the template to check how you're doing. Remember yours may not look exactly the same, don't panic. Next, cut yourself a piece of wire that is going to be enough for almost the red bib area of your robin. Remember to give yourself a little bit of excess on both ends that allows you to wrap on. Start at the top of the beak area and wrap on and use those pliers to push the wires together. Then slot your wire through the wing. This just helps give it a little bit of um, structure, something to hold it a little bit more secure. Take the wire down to the bottom, again remembering to check what is front and what is back in terms of your robin and think about where you're going to be wrapping for the excess wire. Make sure that all your ends go to the back, cut any excess off and use those pliers just to make sure that everything is nice and secure and tight and flat. And there we have our nearly complete robin. Next comes the twine. Cut yourself a length that allows you to run from one side of your robin up and back down without interfering too much with the wire shape. I attached mine using a clove hitch, but you can in fact just tie it on with a simple overhand knot. You may find that you still need to cut a little bit more of your stick off at the end like I did or maybe you judged it right at the start and there we have our beautiful robin here's another example to show you just how much they can vary when they're done with different age groups I really hope that you've enjoyed exploring the robin in this way and looking at the shapes that are used in order to make its form crafting with wire can have some very beautiful outcomes. Remember to sign up to the RSPB Big Garden Bird Watch. We'll be there too, checking out the bird life in our garden. And until then, take care. Bye from Weeby Kids.